Would you believe me if I told you that the JavaScript engine in Chrome is faster on Windows running inside a virtual machine than running natively on my Intel Core i9 16 inch MacBook Pro? Yeah, but on my MacBook Air with the M1 chip, this one over here, the reverse is true. What's up with that? Well, there you go, folks. Now you have the results, you can go. But how did I get here? If you want to know, stick around. We're going to take a look at these JavaScript benchmark tests, how they stuck up to the Edge browser in Windows running inside Parallels in a virtual machine, as well as some other tests and a few surprises in this video. There were surprises for me anyway, and I want to share them with you. Oh, and yes, stick around to the end because this video will also have a raffle. So I want to start this video out just by giving you a baseline of what I'm running and what it's doing. I'm going to open up Chrome in both of these machines. By the way, the specs are in the description for each one of these machines. This is the MacBook Pro Core i9. This is the MacBook Air with the M1 chip. By the way, iPad Pros will now have the M1 chip. That's really crazy. The iPad Pro is now going to be more powerful than most of the laptops out there. Insane. All right, we're going to go to a tool called speedometer. And if you've been following this channel before, you've seen some of my speedometer tests, but today I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. Here it is right here. I'm going to click on start test and it's going to kick the test off on Chrome on the MacBook Pro with the Intel chip. Now, just to give you an idea what's going on behind the scenes, Google Chrome is an Intel X64 executable running on the Intel machine. So pretty basic stuff. Now here on the M1, I'm going to find the same exact test and run it and we're going to kick it off right there. So this is the first test. This is the baseline. It's going to give us an idea of how fast Chrome executes the Speedometer 2 test. Now, Speedometer 2 runs a set of very common JavaScript frameworks, and it runs a to-do list and some interactions, and it simulates human interaction with these applications. It uses Angular, jQuery, React, Vue, I believe it has as well, and vanilla JavaScript as well. All right, so the M1 test is already finished, even though I started it much later than the Intel test. And the score here here, this number 214, it represents the runs per minute. So how many times per minute, how many of those interactions per minute it can execute. Let's head back here and you can see the difference. This is crazy. So 214 runs per minute on the M1 and 65 runs per minute on the Intel. Okay, nothing new here. We've seen this incredible results from the M1 chip before. Now I do want to start off parallels and Windows inside Parallels. And the new version of Parallels that just came out, 16.5, is fully compatible with the new M1 architecture, fully compatible on Apple Silicon. But just because Parallels is fully compatible with Apple Silicon and all of its functionality works fine now, doesn't mean that Windows is ready. Windows for ARM works, but not everything works on it yet. Not everything is fully supported. The browser and JavaScript engines are supported, so that's what we're starting with. But if you're doing things like Visual Studio and developing with Visual Studio, that will not work. And my previous tests have shown that to work. It no longer works. And I've done extensive testing and tried to set it up and run different applications. You can run .NET in the console and run the .NET SDK as a standalone, but Visual Studio is not supported for ARM, and I don't know when it will be even with dotnet 6 on the way it's an alpha right now visual studio i don't know when that's going to be out so we'll find out all right so here is windows running on both of these machines in parallels and in parallel and this version of windows running on the m1 is actually the arm version of windows and if you want to know the installation steps and all that see my previous videos on how to get that set up this version on the intel is the regular intel version of windows so that's going to be important later when it comes to what version of Chrome we're going to be executing. And you'll see some big differences in the ARM version of Chrome and the x86 and x64 versions of Chrome. But first, before we do that, I'm going to do a test with Edge. And that's the default browser that comes with Windows. So on the ARM version of Windows, Edge is the ARM version of Edge. And on the Intel version of Windows, Edge is running in x86 and x64. So let's pop open Edge and we're going to go to 
output speedometer as well here and start the test on both of these machines. All right, that's gonna take a little bit to execute. Let's see what happens. By the way, I do have an affiliate link to Parallels. If you wanna purchase a copy of Parallels, it'll help me out and it won't cost you any extra if you use my link down below and you'll save 10% with my code. Details in the description. All right, folks, we've got a winner. <sighs> the ARM version, of course, of Windows 1. Even though it is Windows in beta, it's still actually beat out the Intel version 163 and that's off the chart this chart the speedometer only goes up to 140 so this got 163 in the edge browser as our result and over here we got 99 on the Intel machine we're gonna put that away into our memory and summarize everything later on but now let's hop over to Chrome so we have something to compare to all right so I just popped open Chrome and I'm gonna go to speedometer here there it is. Let's kick off the test in Chrome on the Intel machine. And let's do the same thing here. But on the M1, I want to bring your attention to something here. I'm going to open up the regular Chrome that I downloaded. And sometimes you might see things like this on a beta software where, I don't know, the window is not opening. It's all black. It did work for me earlier. Now, let me explain to you a little bit what's going on behind the scenes here. So Windows has its own translation layer, kind of like Rosetta translates x64 and x86 software to run on Apple Silicon. Windows has their own translation layer that allows it to run x86 and x64 software inside of Windows for ARM as well. And sometimes it's not as smooth as Rosetta. So I'm going to close that out and try that again. All right, folks. Well, the x86 version of Chrome is not working for me anymore on this machine. And that's the version that you automatically get if you search for Chrome and you try to download Chrome. This button right here, this big blue button that says download Chrome, notice down here it says for Windows, 32-bit. So it doesn't automatically detect that you want to download the ARM version. And that's because the ARM version of Chrome for Windows is not yet fully available. We have to get the Chromium version and I'll show you that next. But there's also a 64-bit version that you can get and that's not obvious from this download here or if you scroll down but if you go into downloads you can get the 64-bit version if you search for the extra downloads that are available so right here the chrome msi for windows 64-bit is something you can download separately and that's what i've done here so i'm going to kick this test off and by the way the result is exactly the same as far as speedometer and i've tested this earlier so the 64-bit and and the x86 32-bit versions of Chrome will have the same result in speedometer and we'll see that in a bit in the meantime here is the result for the runs per minute in chrome on the intel machine and we get 98 so here's the really funny bit chrome running on intel apple software so this is chrome built for apple for mac os is getting a result of 65 while inside the virtual machine running chrome in windows gets 98 so a higher number running inside windows in a virtual machine than natively Interesting. Overall, numbers under 100 for all our tests so far on the Intel machine and numbers over 100 on the M1, whether we're in a virtual machine or not. So here is the worst result so far, and this is 64-bit Chrome. So in other words, what's happening here is Chrome is not running natively on Windows because this is Windows ARM. So Windows is translating the 64-bit Chrome into ARM and that's what's happening here. We get pretty poor results that way. Now, there is something called Chromium. Chromium is a project that actually you can download and it's an executable that you can run on your machine in Windows. And I went ahead and downloaded it. Here it is, Chromium, and it's just an executable. And if we take a look at the architecture that it's running, so I'm gonna open up Task Manager here, and you'll see that Chromium, you can get a version of Chromium that's made for ARM. Yes, ARM64. So here we go. This is Chromium. It looks just like Chrome, but it's at the ARM version. So now we can run speedometer on this and let's take a look at these results. So it's already looking way faster. The flashing is getting to me, but 
No, it's not really getting to me, but it's, it's looking a lot faster on this uh, M1 machine inside the virtual machine in Windows beta. So it's looking pretty impressive. That's how I judge how fast this is going is by how much it flashes. But really the number that you'll see in a moment will speak all the volumes. So here it is, 158. So just as a summary in Chrome running natively on M1 without a virtual machine, we get 214. That's the ARM version of Chrome running natively on Mac OS and Chromium running on ARM in a virtual machine has 158 as a result, which is faster than Chrome inside the virtual machine. And it's about the same as running Edge, the Edge browser that's also ARM inside the virtual machine. All of them much faster than the Intel versions. So there you go, folks, just a little bit of lighthearted JavaScript benchmark testing here. I thought I'd bring us up to speed because Parallels is now out and it has version 16.5, which is fully supported on the Apple Silicon machines. And by the way, this video is not sponsored. I don't have any sponsored videos here, but Parallels is nice enough to give a few copies of their software to one of you folks. Well, a few of you, because I've already given out a few copies and there's a few more left. So that's the raffle today. And the rules to enter the raffle is in two weeks, I will draw a random person from the comments down below this video. You have to leave a comment and you have to let me know know if you use virtualization and how you use it well how could be a very long answer but tell me if you're using docker if you're using parallels or vmware or whatever else you're using let me know down in the comments below and you also have to be a subscriber so when i do draw a random person i check to see if you're a subscriber and also give this video a like if you did like it it'll help other people find this content and um, you know the youtube algorithm and all that at work behind the scenes but if you found this video helpful or in insightful or even just fun because who doesn't like races huh then give this video a like and hopefully somebody else can find it and enjoy it as well all right folks i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one